Her mouth is dry and a drop sore is spinning in her brain. She can barely open her eyes and when she does, there is only darkness. What happened last night? It's Friday? Or is it Saturday? Why doesn't she know what day it is? She squeezes her eyes tightly closed, bracing herself against the headache and the vague nausea in her gut. It must be Friday morning, so why the hangover? Did she drink too much beer last night? Did she drink any beer last night? No, she wasn't drinking. No drinks for a week now. Maybe the sleeping pills? No, there haven't been sleeping pills either. Seven days. Seven long days. This isn't a hangover. This is what it's like now. At 27, she wakes up with some obscure unexplained pain and grogginess, and of course, that familiar cold emptiness, like a weight on her chest. Another day, she reminds herself, bringing her hand to her face, rubbing away the sleep from the corners of her eyes, pinching the chapped skin of her bottom lip. Just another day. She is at home, in bed. Leon is beside her. She could have sworn he was just touching her face. No, of course he wasn't. He's not here. The mattress is concrete, cool and flat. No wonder everything aches. Her hips, her shoulders. Did she sleepwalk to the garage? What the hell happened? She reaches out, but she doesn't find her husband. She finds the gritty texture of a brick wall. Wherever she is, it's almost completely dark, with just a dim glow from somewhere in the corner. Touching her arm, running her hand down her stomach, she recognises the fuzzy texture of her flannelette pyjamas. So she did go to bed, or had been planning to. Had she laid down in the concrete of her garage and slept there? Where am I? She thinks about what she knows happened last night. A meeting, the same meeting she's been to at least once a week for the past four weeks. Her mum gave her a lift home, so she had been at home. It had been a normal night. It occurs to her now that she doesn't even know what time it is. Exhaling and tensing everything inside, she sits up. Her head feels heavy, a cinder block on her aching neck. Her phone must be nearby. She blinks several times, trying to clear the fog from her mind, but it's as if her thoughts are wrapped in a thick veil, the panic rising as the fog begins to lift. Leon? She calls tentatively into the dark. No, of course Leon isn't here. Had she dreamt of him? It wouldn't be the first time. She thinks of Taj and feels even emptier. Her phone isn't there when she reaches for it. She finds nothing but concrete, like a sheet of ice beneath her. And she's thirsty. What she wouldn't give for a glass of water. The air is thick and musty. She can make out only vague, amoebic shapes in the near-perfect darkness. Hello, she says. Turning from her seated position, her body aches, her arms stinging with pins and needles. She feels a sharp pain in her left shoulder when she pushes up off the ground. She had slept with it slung out under her head. She rises slowly and reaches out into the dark, her fingers tingling and her movements clumsy. Only the outline of her arm in front of her is distinct amongst the other amorphous shadows of the room. Wherever it is that she has woken, she can hear nothing over her own ragged breath. It reminds her of an animal, a little like the greyhounds her grandfather used to train, the steam coming off their bodies as they recovered from a sprint. He'd had a heart attack when she was five, her grandmother went just a few years later. Nana Joan had had a fall and broken her hip. And just a few weeks later, she died. Eva still remembers the smell of the hospital room and the way the eucalypt swayed outside the window. The breeze had been so strong that when they opened the windows, the leaves had sounded like heavy rain on a pond. <laughs>